How you doing guys? This is Eric from rulethewasteland.com. I've done a lot of videos on preparedness. There's a lot of material out there on how to be prepared for all sorts of major events. But something that the, a lot of preppers and survivalists and other people who are preparedness minded kind of gloss over for the most part, I think usually because they either take it for granted or because it's not as exciting, is just the every day to day type of physical security stuff that you need to worry about. While it's obviously important to get your preparedness squared away for huge events like an economic collapse, some sort of a huge weather event, or EMP, anything like that that would have catastrophic consequences if it did happen, it's still luckily a pretty low probability event on you know a lifetime kind of time scale. Eventually these things happen guaranteed, but over like one person's lifetime in one country, the probability is fairly low luckily. It still makes sense to prepare for these events because the, catas the uh, consequences are so catastrophic, but it doesn't mean you should just ignore all the little real world things that are absolutely almost guaranteed to happen to you at some point during your life. And those type of things, one, one of the ones that people tend to ignore, I think maybe because they just don't like thinking about it, maybe they don't think that they're personally at risk, but just physical security type situations like muggings, carjackings, being robbed or beat up or assaulted or anything like that, just physical violence on a day-to-day -day, uh, situation in your life. So I'm gonna go over a few basic things that you can do to be prepared and for those just everyday type physical security issues. This basically comes down to two categories of preparedness for any sort of physical security issue. The first category would be your mental preparedness. And the biggest aspect of that is simply being alert. There, You have no idea how many just simple crimes and assaults and things like that could be prevented by someone just being aware of their surroundings, being aware of what's happening around them, who's around them, where they are, signs and symbols of something going wrong, all sorts of stuff like that. So if you're in somewhere, pretty much anywhere, even if you're in your own, own home, you wanna be alert and aware of what's going on. So that means when you're traveling, probably leave the headphones out, don't have your head buried in your phone. Or if you're gonna wear your headphones, at least visually be able to tell what's going on around you. Be visible, you know, visually um, scan everything around you. Be aware of anyone who's acting weird, a strange body language, anything like that. Be aware if you have anything like money hanging out of your pocket, if your wallet is easily visible, don't be flashing money, all sorts of stuff like that. Just basically being aware of your surroundings and uh, keeping your head on a swivel, as they say in the army, is just the single most important thing you can do to prevent yourself from getting into a bad situation because you'll be able to recognize it much earlier and stop it before it even gets to a situation where something bad could happen. Then you won't have to deal with it with the second level of preparedness for, for physical security, which is the physical aspect of security, being able to deal with a threat once it's already appeared. Obviously, being able to not have the threat appear at all is the most important thing, so that's why I emphasize mental alertness and uh, psychological security, making sure you don't go into bad parts of town, knowing what those bad parts of town are, if you have to travel, being with other people, stuff like that, being aware of your surroundings, all that stuff but it still makes sense to have physical security options and being able to respond to threats when they do appear because no matter how alert you are, you still may you know, find yourself in those situations or find a situation where you need to help someone else who is not alert because you can't always just count on everything going well even if you're squared away because there's so many people out there making stupid decisions, not being alert, not being aware, and uh, things may just happen regardless of how alert or aware you are. So basically, when it comes down to physical security, you have you have different options for what you can do. Obviously, uh, physical security weapons is a huge deal. Being able to defend yourself against someone who means to do you harm or means to do other ha others harm. Obviously, a great choice for personal security is a firearm. If you're in an area where you can legally carry a firearm, even open carry or concealed carry, then uh, I suggest you do that as often as possible. This you don't need something crazy like a Desert Eagle. This is simply a. Uh, Ruger LCP, a 380 automatic, and a little Remora holster that you can slip inside your waistband. It's got a good texture on there so it won't fall inside your pants so you don't plaque kill yourself. But uh, as they say, the best gun for concealed carry is the one that you will actually carry. It's better to have a 22 um, Derringer than to not have an AR-15 with all the bells and whistles on it because you can't use what's not there. So it's much better to be armed to some degree than to not have an, a much better gun with you, even if it's more lethal, more, you know, more accurate, whatever. You just try to find something that you can carry consistently and try a method for carrying consistently that you can use. Another option would be something like pepper spray. It's not always maybe you're in a state or a city or you're going on campuses and things like that where you can't always carry a firearm. And uh, in some of those situations, you can still carry a pepper spray. This is a cold steel inferno, and I'll have links to some of the stuff in the description. So, you know, check your local laws, make sure that that's legal because some places it's still not. 
but it also I mean, if you're having a firearm, it sometimes makes sense to have something like pepper spray because there's certain situations that arise where you'll really feel that you need to do something, but lethal force is not justified. And basically, anytime you're pointing your gun at someone, you should be prepared to be using lethal force. So if you're not legally and morally justifiable in killing that person, then don't even pull the gun out. Pull out something like a pepper spray and so, you know, or a taser or something that allows you to incapacitate someone without you know, the very low likelihood of physically damaging them. There's, there's very little risk of you ending up in prison for illegally pepper spraying someone. Even if you do it out of just pure anger, most of those times those people don't have severe consequences. Whereas sometimes people have shot been, you know, use their gun in self-defense in a completely justifiable scenario. And if other, you know, if the jury doesn't agree, then you could still be going to prison. So it's useful to have another method on hand for incapacitating people who may be dangerous to you or others, but who aren't necessarily presenting a uh, threat of life or you know threat of death basically obviously a knife is something that's also super important for um self-defense and just physical security not just from defense against other people defense against animals defense against being trapped in a car maybe you have to cut your seatbelt, cut clothing off someone who's been in an accident and has a wound anything like that knives are hugely useful for all sorts of preparedness related situations i usually like to carry something very big most of the time like this cold steel vaquero this is a little bit intense for most people and depending on laws it may actually be illegal where you are to carry a, a large knife like this, but there's always options. This is a Lansky, it's called the Lansky World Legal Slip Joint Knife. It's difficult to open, but that's you know sort of by design because they made this design to be able to be legally carried in like 156 countries. So no matter what commie shithole state you are in, like New York City or whatever, you should still be able to use and carry a knife like this with you. And it has sort of a little metal thing for breaking windshields or self-defense there on the back. You like it, you can hit people with. And it's still obviously a very sharp knife that would be very useful in self-defense, still able to free yourself from some sort of debris or cut away articles of clothing or seatbelts or anything like that. So look into a knife like this if you're somewhere where you can't carry a uh, really big defensive knife because this is still extremely useful and I recommend you having a, a knife on you at all times. I carry a knife almost 100% of the time. Pretty much the only time I don't carry a knife is if I'm going somewhere where it's not allowed or if I'm going somewhere where the knife itself would get damaged, like maybe if I'm swimming in salt water or something I don't have my cold steel on, or if I'm doing some sort of intense physical activity where it could fall off or, or dig into my hip or something like I'm doing grappling or playing kickball or whatever, I don't usually have my knife on me. I'll have it in my bag or something nearby. But other than that, I pretty much have a, some sort of pocket knife on me 100% of the time. If you ever see me in public, test me on it because I will have one with me. And even beyond that, you have options like keychain um, cubitons. This is kind of an interesting shape one that I, I don't really like this one because the prongs are a little too far apart even for my fingers. And I don't have small hands. Mine are, I typically use an adult large and the gloves are not enormous, but they're not small. And these are drive my, they're a little too wide and they drive my knuckles apart painfully. But it would still be much more painful for the person getting struck with this. And you could use the, uh, the pointy end for jabbing people. Now you also have to be careful with these because as I've had happen to me in the past, if this is on your keychain, you will completely forget that you have it because after not using it for many years, hopefully, and just carrying it around, it'll kind of become second nature. And I've gone into like a courthouse for something before and they're like, what the hell is this? And they basically confiscate it. So uh, I recommend something a little bit more um, mild looking than these, a little bit smaller. This one's kind of large and heavy, but they have some. One that I like is shaped like a cat. So you kind of have plausible deniability there. You could say, oh, it's my cat keychain," And I'll have a link to the description below. And that one is uh, a, almost too small for my hands, but it does work. So it's very good, especially for women or people who don't have large hands. And it's uh, much more, or much less aggressive looking. You know, it looks like a keychain. Some people who aren't into self-defense and everything won't even recognize it as being a weapon. So that's useful too. But just basically having some sort of physical item that you can use to as a, a force multiplier to take the your physical defense capabilities and ratchet them up a few notches. Anything from cubitons, pepper sprays, knives and guns, tasers, just something that you can have to um, just even the odds a little bit if, you're, if it comes down to you having to face an attacker. Obviously one element of facing an attacker physically is your own body so that means being in shape and having some sort of training in, in defensive martial arts or um, just some sort of self-defense techniques being in shape is huge and it's probably something that's not dealt with nearly enough 
and when it comes to preparedness, your ability to simply run away is one thing, climb over a wall or a fence or something like that quickly, um, push someone away when you're running, and obviously if it comes down to physically fighting someone, being as strong, as fast, and as fit as possible is gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier and it's gonna make you a hell of a lot harder to kill. So basically, for any preparedness reason, you need to be in shape. No bullshit, just get in shape. There's no, no excuses, you gotta do it. It's just too important for all aspects of your life and certainly preparedness. Beyond that, I strongly recommend you do some sort of a martial arts, probably some boxing, something to do with striking and some sort of grappling like uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, no gi submission grappling, judo, something like that that has submission holds that allow you to take on attacker on the ground and also give you ways to subdue someone without simply gouging their eyes out and crushing their throat or something like that because just like with the physical weapons like the, the gun versus the pepper spray, you want to have options for subduing someone in a situation where you can't really justify using lethal force. So um, you want to have more options available to you as well. So those are my thoughts on physical security in everyday life. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what uh, you do to be safe in kind of everyday life in big cities and stuff like that. Of what kind of things you carry, what kind of training and physical fitness standards you set for yourself. Let me know in the comments below and check out the um, description or rulethewasteland.com for links to some of the items that I mentioned like the Lancy slip joint knife, the cold steel pepper spray, the Kubadon, stuff like that. So I'll talk to you guys later and check out rulethewasteland.com. Thanks for watching.